So I spoke to a guy the other day and he asked me what I do for a living. I said, I work right here at Phoenix in the middle part in Denmark and we produce and develop exhaust systems and emission solutions for heavy duty trucks and other big awesome vehicles. And he said to me, oh sorry, then you're gonna have to find a new job to him. And I said, really, why is that? And he told me, haven't you heard? Because in five years, we'll all be driving around electric vehicles. And that made me wonder, is it really so simple to make the whole transport sector green and sustainable, just electrify the whole thing? So I spoke to some of my colleagues right here at Phoenix, who luckily are some of the brightest minds in the industry. And I would like to share with you what they taught me. Come on, let me show you. Today, the world consumes diesel fuel equivalent to roughly 28 million barrels of oil every day. And according to McKinsey studies, this figure is projected to grow by 1.5% every year towards 2050. In rough figures, this corresponds to over 46 terawatt hour of energy every day. And that is the amount of energy we will have to find from the alternative energy sources if we want to eliminate the use of diesel. To put that into perspective, in 2017, all the windmills in the whole world produced together a little over 1,100 terawatt hours. But that's over the whole year. So it would require nearly 15 times that energy output to cover the energy consumption currently provided by diesel fuel. Then comes the challenges of storing and distributing the energy and the fact that the transport sector is not the only place where we need to cut down on CO2 emissions. So let's face it, it's very simple to call for electrification as the one-stop solution to all the transport sector's environmental impact. But it's really not an easy thing to do. And is it even the right thing to do? Dnex is one of the leading uh, developers and producers of full exhaust systems. We produce and develop both the substrates for particulate filters and for catalysts. We also develop and produce the chemical coatings that we put onto it so that it works as it should. But that's not all. We also develop and produce the canning, the housing, the pipes, the insulation, the decoupling elements of a full exhaust system. And this gives us a unique knowledge and insight into what is really needed and what can be done in terms of reducing emissions and CO2 impact. Since we joined the game in the early 1980s, a lot of things has happened on emission standards and on cleanliness of exhaust gases. Let me show you a little bit more about that. Since the introduction of the earliest emission standards, like the Euro 1 in 1992, the allowed amount of hazardous materials like nitrogen oxides and particulate matter has been reduced by 90 to 95 percent. The allowed sulfur content in the fuel has been reduced from 5,000 parts per million to less than 15. And also the diesel engine's notorious emission of ultra-fine particles, which is evidently one of the most dangerous pollutants when it comes to human health, has undergone a massive improvement since the introduction of particle filters with an efficiency of nearly 99% trapping rate. In fact, we are now at a level where the concentration of these particles from the exhaust of a modern diesel vehicle is significantly lower than the air you breathe in a typical urban environment. As an example, in Denmark only 3% of the particle pollution is actually caused by exhaust from vehicles. So, in terms of reducing the environmental impact that the automotive industry and especially diesel engines just like this one here is leaving, we've come a long way over the past 30 years. But we can still do a lot to reduce emissions from such engines. Heat preservation technologies and optimized coating formulas to increase after treatment efficiency across more versatile operating conditions and low weight designs and energy recovery systems to increase fuel efficiency and reduce CO2 emissions are just some of the technologies that we at DNEX are ready to incorporate in next generation exhaust systems. And speaking of CO2, we're now coming back to this whole electrification thing. Because there's no doubt that the challenges that our planet is facing on global warming caused by the emission of greenhouse gases are to be taken very seriously. But it's really not that simple just to say that we replace all of the fuel tanks on all of the trucks in the whole world with batteries. I'd like to give you a little bit more perspective on that. 
manufacturing a battery electric vehicle typically emits higher amounts of CO2 than a similar conventional car. Why? Mainly because of the battery itself. Also mining the lithium and cobalt that are key elements in modern day batteries also brings in environmental and human complications which will only grow with the increasing demand of batteries. Furthermore, the source of the electricity used for charging is also not irrelevant. Unless the electricity is generated by a sustainable source, the environmental impact of operating the vehicle is simply offset from tailpipe to power plant. And finally, when it comes to heavy-duty vehicles that each move several tons of goods over thousands of kilometers every day, the size, the weight, the CO2 impact, the recharging time, and the costs of the battery that would provide the same energy density as diesel requires an unlikely technological breakthrough in order to make it seem feasible. What we're trying to say here is that electrification of some parts of the transport sector, like passenger cars and urban buses and local distribution vehicles, makes absolutely great sense, both cost-wise, convenience-wise and especially for the environment. But for long-haul heavy-duty vehicles, there are other alternatives which are much more beneficial both to the environment and from the end user. Already today, the population of trucks and buses that runs on natural gas, like the one that is being refueled right here, grows and with a great benefit for the environment. Compared to conventional diesel trucks, these vehicles emit nearly 30% less CO2, offers the same power, driving range and operating economy, and with the right emission solution installed, no particular other emissions. Furthermore, the research and trends within the fields of biodiesel and biogas, the so-called renewable fuels, which, if it's done properly, basically obtains CO2 from the atmosphere during production, offsetting the amount it emits while being combusted, enables an even further reduction of the CO2 impact from heavy-duty vehicles. Some projections show that even a diesel truck can be operated nearly CO2 neutral in the near future if it's fueled with renewable fuels. So all in all, in spite of all the predictions of total electrification in a few years time, it seems like there might still be a job for me and for my 1,500 colleagues all over the world working for a clean environment for our future generations. Be sure to check out our website and our LinkedIn page for more updates and knowledge to come 